Okay, so as you can see, um, the system is set up. Um, I have the, uh, the IP addresses set up. Everything is set up okay for your out-of-band access. It's in a cluster configuration, so that's good. And then I have my virtual address here set up. So as you can see right now, no chassis have been discovered. And in 141, we actually do support a uh, rack-mounted um, UCSC class uh, as well. Um, I don't have any of those right now in the lab. But as you can see, um, right now, the, the, the uh, fabric interconnects have not been set up. So the first thing that I always do before I do anything is I set up my policies. Now, this is important because um, this is going to basically uh, set up the global policies for the whole system. So in my system, I use four links from the fabric interconnect down into each fabric extender or what we call I.O. module. Um, so I want to discover uh, by four links. This could be set as one link and it will still discover uh, with, with two or four. This is basically the minimum number of links. If you're going to mix and match um, certain chassis in your setup, maybe you have one link, certain have two, certain have four. Um, you could set it as one and it will work. Just for completeness, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, uh, and set it up as, a, as four links. And the other thing is the redundancy, the power redundancy. That's important um, because if you have all four power supplies set up, and configured and plugged in, you should set up to grid. Um, if you have three, then you could do N plus one. If you have two, you could do grid or N plus one. And obviously, you could do non redundant as well to provide, uh, you know, if you only have one power supply or something in the chassis. Uh, or even if you have two power supplies in the chassis and need both, um, you could set it up as non redundant. But in my lab, I've got, it, I've got all four power supplies and I've got four links going there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and save that. Um, the other policies I generally leave blank. This is uh, the purpose of these videos is to show you the initial config. We'll dive into the more advanced topics uh, later on. But uh, for now, um, let's just stick with the basic policies on the equipment tab and getting the basic connectivity set up. And like I said, we'll, we'll have videos with more advanced topics. Um, so I'm going to go into the fabric interconnect now. And you can see, um, if I go to the general, that, that it sees connectivity. Uh, on some of these ports, but they're not set up correctly uh, right now. So uh, the way that we're going to do this is we are going to go into the fixed module, which is basically the, the actual fixed portion, the 20 ports that are fixed here. And as you can see, there's all these different types of ports. In version 1.4, we added FCOE storage ports, appliance ports, um, monitoring ports for, for uh, monitoring uh, through the packet capture. Um, as well as the traditional server and uplink Ethernet uh, ports, as well as unconfigured. So all of our ports right now are in the unconfigured category. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select ports 1 through 4, and I'm going to set them up as, as server ports, because that's what's connected down into the chassis. Now, it's very important, I can't stress enough, that you should enable the ports in the order that you want the chassis discovered. If you set it up, and you don't do that, then you're asking for trouble because in order to renumber the chassis, you have to basically delete all the connections and, and re-acknowledge them. It's a, it's a painful process. So if you have the system set up in the racks, it's important to have a good wiring diagram. Um, you enable the ports in the order that you want them discovered. So uh, I only have one chassis in my lab, so I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say configure a server port. So the second I do this, um, it's going to start to discover, and as you can see, a chassis has been discovered now um, along those four ports. And I'm going to do the same thing on Fabric Interconnect B. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to configure ports one through four as server ports. Okay, so if I go here uh, on the Fabric Interconnect, you can see now that all four of these ports are green, and the same thing on Fabric Interconnect B, all the ports are green. That's good. That's what we want. The next thing I want to do is configure the uplink Ethernet ports, which are, in my case, are port 20. I have a 10 gig link um, upstream. Now, it's very important that you understand what you're getting into when you configure the uplinks. Um, when you configure uplinks, you have to know whether you're going to be doing LACP ether channels or whether you're going to keep them separately. Um, just have, you know, one and one or two and two and, and keep them separately or have them pinned to different uh, 
to different um, VLANs and stuff like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a whole separate video on on upstream connectivity. But suffice to say, in general, um, most of the people that I work with they have one connection going from A to an upstream switch and then one connection from B to a different upstream switch. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and configure these as as 10 gig uh, uplink Ethernet ports. So I'm gonna go into uh, port 20 here and as you can see it's admin down and disabled if I right click and say configure as uplink port um, I could do the same thing on here as well if I go to unconfigured ports and I say configure as uplink port and say yes okay so so that's done so now if I go on the primary here um, you can see that that port is up as well but on the other end is a is a, is a catalyst 4900m 10 gig um, uh, switch with its ports set up as trunk ports, 802.1Q trunk ports. That's what you, you basically want to make sure those ports are upstream. Now, the last thing that I need to configure is the fiber channel. So in my lab, I, have, I do have some fiber channel on an expansion module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uplink um, server uh, fiber channel ports here, and you can see that I have, I have two uh, two links. Um, and so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to enable um, uh, the, these links um, and I'm going to put it on the right vSAN. Now right now it's set to vSAN 1 but the, but the vSAN in my lab is vSAN 10 and that's why it's down. So there's a couple of things you need to do. Um, the first thing I like to do is highlight all the ports that aren't in use and I like to disable them because by default all the fiber channel ports are enabled. So I'm going to go to both of these uh, expansion modules and I am going to disable these ports. Okay. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create vSAN 10 in order to get them to link up properly. I mean obviously they're, they're not linked up, they're, they're in fail state right now. Um, so I'm going to go to the SAN tab and I'm going to go to vSANs. Now, my lab is very different than most setups. Most setups are going to have um, a, a vSAN on fabric A and a vSAN on fabric B. In my case, I actually have them both on vSAN 10. So you have to know what you're doing here. You can't just use 10 and 20 or whatever. You have to ask your storage administrator what vSANs are configured on the other end of those fiber channel links. So it's very important when you, before you even get to this point, is to have all that stuff laid out um, and, and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK here. And I'm going to go back to the Equipment tab, and I'm going to go to the FC port. And as you can see, now vSAN 10 is there, and I'm going to Save Changes. And then once I save those changes, you can see the link went green. It, it negotiated with the switch upstream and, and negotiated the fact that it was on uh, vSAN 10, and now I have the basic connectivity set up. Okay, so as you can see, it went green here as well. So the good news, right, is I've got everything set up physically, right? The physical um, setup is done correctly. And as you can see, I don't have any uh, yellow boxes around any of the fabric interconnects anymore because the basic setup has been done. I have a chassis now, right? So the chassis has a bunch of servers that have been discovered. It has four power supplies. It has two I.O. modules, and it has eight fans. Um, so there you go. There's the, the, the basic physical setup at a very minimal level to, to get the system to a point where you can configure it.